We at Builder Central built an entire Doom-like game without writing a single line of code. And this isn't just any basic game. A proper first-person shooter, complete with enemies and challenges, built entirely using AI and no code. Till now, no one's been able to build a truly great AAA game from India because of multiple reasons. But now, things are changing. AI is leveling the playing field. Now, we have more tools than ever. And maybe with the right approach, maybe small teams and even independent builders, we can finally create something at the scale we never thought was possible. So, with that being said, this is our attempt here at Builder Central to take a step in that direction. And to do this, we're not going to be using Cursor, we're not going to be using Bolt. And to make this happen, we're going to be using Elon's X AI, as they recently released Grok 3, which is said to be the best model for anything nowadays. So, today, we're going to be showing you exactly how we did it. From brainstorming, to generating code, making visuals, and actually running the game in front of you, all in just 15 minutes. So this is the same thing that we've done in a lot of the other videos, all right? So the first step is always to brainstorm and see the scope of what we're actually working with. So first, we pull up our main tool, which is XAI's Grok 3. And since this is the first time that we're using it, we're going to have to set it up. So let's quickly do that. Now, in the past, we've used ChatGPT, we've used Claude, we've used DeepSea, Gemini, and all for generating code and building apps. But Grok 3 is supposed to be better at understanding technical and reasoning heavy tasks. So just check this out. It beats GPT-40, Gemini 2.0 Pro, DeepSea V3, and even Claude 3.5 Sonnet. These are all the best of the best models in these major benchmarks that we have. So we're going to start with the prompt. With that being said, let's get to it. Hey, I want to build a game similar to Doom using JavaScript. It should be a website. People can come and play the game. So you see, it's simple, it's direct, straight to the point prompt with no fluff and it does what we need it to do. So for this, we've used the think mode as we need reasoning. Okay, so Grok is thinking right now. And while it's thinking, remember how I spoke about the fact that India hasn't created a decent or even a great AAA game yet? So let's take a moment to discuss why. So there's a YouTube content creator, one of India's biggest AI content creators by the name of Varun Maya. And he's already covered this in a video about why India hasn't been able to create groundbreaking games like China or America. And we highly recommend checking it out. So after watching that video, the gist is, despite having some of the best engineering talent in the world, we still struggle with gaming. We have massive studios working on animation, VFX, and game assets for global companies. And yet, when was the last time you played an amazing AAA game from India? Exactly. There are three main issues over here. The first one is not no risk taking from investors. Now, this is a no-brainer because studios don't fund ambitious games because ROI isn't guaranteed. They prefer mobile games, which are easier, safer, and most likely more profitable. The second issue is a talent drain. The best game developers leave to work for foreign studios. Like, think of it. If you're skilled, why would you work here when you can work on creating the next GTA or FIFA or Call of Duty in the US? And last but not least is an execution gap. There are great engineers, but they don't have enough of high-level creative direction. So making a game is more than just code. It's about vision, storytelling, design, and marketing as well. Okay, so Grok is done thinking. Let's see what we've got. Okay, this is wild. It's given us a solid blueprint. What to build, player approach, player movement, shooting enemies, and basically everything we need to make this game. This sounds like something we can actually build. Okay, so now that we've got the brainstorming out of the way, let's move on to step two, which is building the game. Cool. So now let's ask Grok to give us the complete code by simply prompting, can you give me the code for the entire game? <laughs> Look at that. Gronk has given us exactly what we need. The complete code to make our Doom-style game come to life. All right. Okay, so let's test this out. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file in VS Code. All right, and name the project the Doom game. Okay, so let's make an index.html file and paste all the code that we got from Grok. Okay, the next is for us to set up a live server extension. Now, this is a super useful tool as it automatically refreshes the browser whenever we make changes to our code. If you don't already have it, just search for live server in the VS Code Extensions Marketplace and install it. Okay, let's click go live in the bottom right corner and... <laughs> Bro, it actually works. Come check this out. 
Awesome. Okay. So we've got the walls rendering properly. We've got smooth player movement with the arrow keys. And the canvas display also looks good. Not bad, bro. Okay, this is already looking great, but I think we can make it even better with a couple of enhancements. So let's go to Grok and prompt again to add some improvements. What do we need in the game? Hey guys, what do you think we need? Enemies. Enemies, great. Yes. Fight tile. Mad, mad. Okay, sorted. So let's add that. All right. Okay, amazing. We got the updated code with Grok. So now we're just going to paste it into our VS code instead of the previous file. All right, and just like that, it starts spitting out an entire game loop with actual enemies. Insane. Okay, so you see these little red dots on the map? So that's our enemy. We need to stay away from them. Player movement, done. Enemies, kind of done. What's still left is being able to shoot and being able to see the health of the player. So we're just gonna ask Grok to put it in and it should work. Let's quickly copy paste the code into BS code. At this point, we have a game running without touching the code ourselves. Okay, some parts of the code don't run properly because of minor logical or syntax issues. So let's fix that. What we're going to fix is things like health decreasing, enemies need to be more visible, user movements, and a couple of things here and there. So as you can see, the game is becoming a little more complex and when that happens, there are going to be bugs, there are going to be a couple of incomplete features and even the workflow that we're currently using, which is just brainstorming and copy pasting directly is a little ineffective to be very honest. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move everything to cursor, which is just like VS Code, but with a chat side by side and even agentic capabilities to continue our work. All right, so let's do it. We've used cursor a bunch of times before, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be a smooth process. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll quickly set some context, okay? So we need to give it some time to be contextually aware of what's happening here. Okay, so let it read the entire code base and as always, let it take charge. We trust cursor and you should too. We used cursor to create an app in a cab in Bangalore traffic. And if you haven't seen that video, then make sure you check out the link in the description below. All right, sorted. Okay, so now we're going to start slow, add some personality, add a couple of aesthetics to the entire game. Because currently, as you see, it's kind of bland. It works, but it doesn't look like a game at all. So we'll start by adding some texture to the walls. And now we need to give our fighter a look as well. So with that being said, we're going to move on to step three now, which is generating the visuals. All right, so let's jump back to Grok so we can create a proper original fighter of how we really want it to be. So we're just going to give it a description and let him cook. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay, so this is an amazing image, but we need it in full. So we'll just ask it to generate it again and generate a head to toe version instead. Okay, I like this one. This one is nice. Check it out. Yeah. All right. Now, let's just remove the background and put it in our code base and name it enemy.png. And now we'll ask cursor to update it. Okay, another thing that we've realized is currently the map size is too small and the enemy is also too scaled. So let's fix that with just a prompt and some acceptances. Are wah! <laughs> now it looks awesome. The map looks great. Also, the enemy is scaled nicely. So, what do we need to do next? So, now we need to add a couple of other things to the game. What do you think is the most... Okay, now it's time to add some assets to the project. And this time is the most important thing. Considering that this is an FPS game, we obviously need to have things like guns, bullets, explosions, and everything along those lines. So, we'll try to find it on the web first. And if we don't get it, then we already have Grok for this. Okay, sorted. Fortunately, we found all of the assets that we're looking for on the internet. So let's download them and put them in our files. Amazing. I, I think it, it feels a lot better now. I feel like I'm eight years old again, sitting in front of my PC and playing Doom for the first time. <laughs> Wait, the screens? Something's looking off about the screen. Yeah, it's this, man. The health bar is colliding with our map. So let's ask Cursor to put the health bar on the other side for a cleaner view. Sorted. Okay, game's finalized. It's done. So we did this with Grok 
and small frequent changes in cursor. So now that the game is complete, we're going to show you what the actual gameplay is like in real time. Now, now that that's done, we're going to move on to step four, which is the most important part, deploying the game. So now it's time to push the code to GitHub and make the game publicly available there. So in this video, we're going to be using GitHub. Yes, GitHub, not Vercel. So now let's go to GitHub and create a new repository named Doom. Okay, after creating the repository, GitHub gives you all the commands that you need to run to push the code to GitHub. So now let's quickly come back to Cursor and run all the commands in the terminal. So now, you, as you can see, we have all of our assets and even our main index.html file here. So now all we need to do is make it public. And this is just a five step process, okay? First step is go to settings. Okay, so I'm gonna do that here. Step two, go to pages, which is here on the left hand side. Step number three is select the source as deployed from the branch. Step number four is choose the branch, usually main and the folder root or docs for your source files. And last but not least, as always, save it. <laughs> And that's it, wait for a minute or two, refresh the page, and you can see the link for the game. All right, fellow builders, that's it. You can now check out our game, check out the code that we didn't write ourselves with using AI to create, and see what all is possible with it. Also, we're promoting it on our Gilda Central page, so feel free to build your own game and share it on our page as well. So, the final verdict is, Grok is really good and does the job really well. And all the experience like the preview, text to image, text to code, everything in one place does wonders too. If you like this video, make sure you share it with your friends and subscribe to Builder Central for more such building.